All right, a few examples on special right triangles. When we say special, we mean that the right triangles have very particular angles, very particular acute angles, 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. Over here, this one is a little bit easier to work with because it's isosceles, whereas this one is scalene. All the sides are different. So in this video, you're going to hear me refer to this as the long leg across from the 60 degree angle. This of course would be the short leg. This obviously is the hypotenuse. Over here it's just leg and leg. They're both the same. And of course hypotenuse. <clears throat> now the reason these are special is because their sides are in a nice extended ratio. We don't need to use calculators to solve these. We don't need to use Pythagorean theorem. We don't need any of that stuff if we know the trick. And the trick is in a 30, 60, 90, the sides are in this extended ratio. 1, radical 3, 2. Over here it's 1, 1, radical 2. All right, and we'll work with that at length here in these examples. I'll explain what that means. Those are the things you want to memorize. Number 1. In number one, we have a 45, 45, 90. So what I like to do is write down 45, 45, 90. See if I can remember my extended ratio. <clears throat> underneath the 45, I put a 1, a 1, and underneath the 90, I put a radical 2. Now that radical 2 basically means whatever the leg is, you multiply it by radical 2. <clears throat> so <coughs> in this problem, we have 6 here. Right, 45 degrees, 6, so I keep it in a nice column here. So if that's 6, then the other leg is exactly the same. That's what the ratio means, 1 to 1. And the hypotenuse is 6 times radical 2. So in this example, y is 6 and x is 6 radical 2. And if you wanted to, you can check to make sure that that works in the Pythagorean Theorem. I'm not going to do that for you, but you can certainly try that on your own. Notice that if you were to actually calculate this value, it would be a decimal. What we're trying to do in this video is show exact values. Number two. In number two, we have a 30... 60, 90, special right triangle. So this is 1, 1 times radical 3, and 2. All right, so we have, let's see, I like to examine what I'm given. In this case, I'm given the hypotenuse. So over here under the hypotenuse, I'm going to put a 6. Keep it nice and lined up here in a column. So if that's 6, then... I go and I jump over here and I say, all right, it's one to two. So if this is six, then this must be three. All right, it's half of it. The 30 degree, the short leg is half of the hypotenuse. That's how that ratio works. And the middle one is simply just the short leg times radical three. That's all it is. So you would say X is, that is the long leg and y is the short leg. And again, that works in Pythagorean Theorem too. Uh, let's go to number three. So far they've been pretty simple. This is a 45, 45, 90. So it's 1, 1, radical 2. All right, we examine what we're given. We're given the hypotenuse. So we go over here and we say, all right, this is 6, radical 2. And if we have, kind of have to work backwards now. So if that's 6 radical 2, the ratio tells us that's 6 and that's 6. So that's pretty simple. U is equal to V and they're both equal to 6. Cool. Number 4. 30, 60, 90. 1 radical 3, 2. What we're given here is, let's see, this is 30 degrees. So I'm given the 30 degree side, which is 4. So I immediately know that the hypotenuse is double that, 4 times 2. 
and the one in the middle is quite simply the short leg times radical 3. So I've got v equal to 4 radical 3 and u equal to 8. Number uh, 6, I skipped number 5 there. 30, 60, 90. 1, radical 3, 2. Just examine what you're given. It's getting pretty monotonous now, which is a good thing. That means you're learning something. 60 degrees is 2, radical 3. All right, if that's 2, radical 3, this is 2. And if that short leg is 2, this is 4. So again, fairly easy. We've got A equal to the hypotenuse and B equal to B is equal to the side that's across from 30 degrees, the short leg. Number five, we're kind of jumping around a little bit here. I switched the order a little. This is a 30, 60, 90. Now this one is a little bit more challenging because it's a challenge because the side that's given to you, and first of all, let's write this down, one radical three, two. The side that's given to you, nine, is across from the 60. Well, that's not good. That's supposed to have a radical three at the end, but it doesn't. So what we need to do is think about this for a second. We know that the side across from 60 is the long leg. The long leg, is equal to, let's think, it's whatever the short leg is, remember there's the, the short leg in front of there, times radical 3. So it's the shorter leg times square root of 3. So we know the long leg is 9. We know the short leg is letter B. So it's 9 is equal to B times radical 3. Well, we want to get B by itself. To get B by itself, you undo multiplication. So it's 9 divided by square root of 3. And we can't leave square root of 3 on the bottom, so we're going to have to perform the rationalization. We're going to rationalize the denominator. All right, the reason we're doing that is because you can't, let me write that again, you cannot leave uh, radicals in the denominator. You can't leave them there. that would be considered not simplified enough. So we're going to rationalize it and rational, the, the process of rationalizing is basically just to get rid of that square root down there. And so here's what we do. We say alright, we want to multiply top and bottom by whatever the radical is down here. Pretty simple. So that gives us 9 radical 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. That's just 3. Just get rid of the radical symbol. It's actually a uh, square root of 9, which is equal to just 3. All right, and the reason that we can multiply this right here, because that's actually equal to just 1. Think about it. Something over itself is just 1, so it doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just changes how it looks. So we have 9 on top and a 3 on bottom. They, those cancel out. They simplify, I should say, so it's just 3 radical 3. That's all it is. 3 radical 3. And that was, uh, that was B. That was our short leg. Okay? So let me put that up here. Our short leg is 3 radical 3. Alright, if your short leg is 3 radical 3, then your hypotenuse is twice that. So 3 radical 3 times 2 well, you just multiply the number out in front and you don't multiply the number underneath the radical. So there we go. A is 6 radical 3, B is 3 radical 3. Let's try another one more challenging here. We're going to ramp it up. Number 7 is a 45, 45, 90. So 1, 1, 1 radical 2. The thing that's given here is the hypotenuse, that's 14. It would be nice if it had a radical 2, it doesn't, so we have to do a little bit more work. So we know the hypotenuse is equal to whatever the leg is times the square root of 2. Think about that, the hypotenuse is equal to whatever these guys are 
times the square root of 2. Alright, so we know the hypotenuse here is 14. The leg, let's call it x. You can call it y as well. They, they're equal to each other, as you know. So we're going to divide. 14 divided by the square root of 2, that's x. We want to rationalize. This time, when we rationalize, we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. Remember, you multiply whatever by whatever the bottom number is. So we get 14 squared to 2 over 2. And it's really nice here. We've got 14 and 2. That's 7 over 1. So it's just 7 radical 2. And that's what x is equal to. y is the same because it's an isosceles triangle, isosceles right triangle. So 7 root 2, 7 root 2. All right, almost finished here. Let's try this one. We've got a 45, 45, 90. So that's 1, 1, radical 2. In this case, we are given one of the legs is 4, radical 6. So I'll put that right here. The other one is exactly the same. That one's easy. So that would be y equals 4, radical 6. And let's see, we want to multiply whatever the leg is, multiply it by radical 2 to get the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is equal to the leg times radical 2. So the hypotenuse in this problem is x. The leg is 4 radical 6 times radical 2. Square root rules tell us 6 and 2 can get multiplied together. And that leaves us with 4 times the square root of 12. But we know that 12 has, uh, let's see, the factors of 12. If we kind of simplify this, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. So we can break 12 up into square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And that breaks up into 4, radical 4, radical 3, a little separate there. Square root of 4, we should know that's just 2 without the square root. So that's 4 times 2 times radical 3. 4 times 2 is 8, radical 3. So that is your hypotenuse, 8, radical 3. That's all. Okay, uh, I think we have one more here, number 9. This is a 30, 60... 90. 1, radical 3, 2. Alright, the 30 degree side is given the short, this is the shorter leg, that's 2 radical 3. Uh, let me jump to the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is going to be twice that. Notice I'm not multiplying the radicand by 2. I'm just multiplying the number out in front. I'm just going to double that. Alright, and this one in the middle here, the longer leg, is quite simply going to be Let's see, it's going to be the shorter leg times radical 3. This is what y is equal to. Remember our rules, right? Numbers underneath the radicals can get multiplied together. So this is 2 times the square root of 9. We know the square root of 9 is just 3, so get rid of the radical. So that's 6. So we get 6 right here. Okay. So there's some special right triangles for you. All right, and they all really boil down to, if I, if I scroll back up here, they boil down to this idea. All right, the fact that if you have special right triangles, <clears throat> their sides are in a nice extended proportion. So you don't need calculators for any of this stuff. 